You know, I want to talk about what would actually happen to your body if you were to only eat carbohydrates for about two weeks. And of course, when you eat food, it never comes in one thing. It always comes with a little bit of protein, a little bit of fat, things like that. There's nothing in nature that comes just as a pure carbohydrate. What's interesting is that an average person, at least in the United States, consumes roughly 65% of their calories in this form, refined carbohydrates. Now, as far as looking at any research on this, it's very difficult to find research simply because there isn't any. Um, who's gonna volunteer to only eat refined carbohydrates for any period of time? However, there's some other data that we can take a look at. There are certain prisoners of war from the Second World War that were only fed white rice, for example. And there's data from Japan in the late 1800s where a good portion of the population was consuming a tremendous amount of refined white rice. They did not eat the whole brown rice, right? They polished it with certain machines. And so they took out the outer portion and that led to a lot of problems. Now, what's interesting about white rice is that um, you have a very concentrated carbohydrate food. There's not a lot of protein. There's not a lot of fat. There's a lot of starch, okay? And that starch is gonna turn into sugar really quick. First, when they noticed a big problem uh, when they went to this polished rice, a lot of people were getting sick, uh, especially in the military, especially in the Navy. And they noticed that they had several problems with people, okay? They had problems with the edema and swelling. They had problems with lack of appetite. They had problems neurologically. They started having numbness and tingling and pain in their feet and their hand to the point where they went paralyzed. And then eventually the heart gave out and they ended up with a cardiac arrest, a heart attack. And that was called beriberi, okay? Which is a severe B1 deficiency that originated from this polished rice. Now you can also get beriberi other ways from drinking a lot of alcohol. They tried to solve this problem for quite a few years until one doctor was able to help solve this in the early 1900s where they fed these sailors barley and some meat. And now at first they thought it was a deficiency of protein, but it wasn't until later after they discovered vitamins that they found it was a B1 deficiency. But to describe this condition called beriberi, you have wet beriberi and you have dry beriberi. Wet beriberi involves the cardiovascular system, your heart. You're gonna experience a lot of edema and swelling in your legs. You're gonna experience an increase in pulse rate, okay? You're gonna experience cardiomegaly where your heart enlarges, which is very, very dangerous. Dry beriberi involves the nervous system and it shows up in the feet and the hands. Uh, numbness, extra pain, and then paralysis. And because lack of B1 affects the nervous system out of all the different systems, and the vagus nerve is one of the biggest nerves, you're gonna have a lot of digestive problems. You'll have constipation, you'll have a loss of appetite. I mean, even that vagus nerve without the B1 can't make hydrochloric acid. And so if you were to just put someone on a white rice diet, they probably would not last one to two months before they had a heart attack. Now, this is all dependent on the person's genetics, how much nutrition they have built up, and of course, what else they ate. The point is that when you eat only carbohydrates, there's a lot of health problems that are gonna occur. Let's talk also about the lack of protein, right, in refined carbohydrates. When someone consumes refined grains or sugars without the protein source, because typically plants do not have the same quality protein as animal protein. And so there's always gonna be a problem with protein in general, amino acids, in its bioavailability, in its ability to turn into body tissues. And we need a sufficient amount of protein for our bones, our muscles, our nerves. But more importantly, our immune system is dependent on protein. And then our DNA is dependent on protein. All the enzymes and the biochemical pathways need protein. And without that quality protein, Wow, you're gonna have all sorts of issues. So let me just run down a list of protein deficiency problems, okay? Number one, apathy, depression. Your mood is gonna tank. You're gonna feel lethargic. You're gonna be tired chronically. Your memory's gonna go. You're gonna have a hard time sleeping. You'll have diarrhea, flaky skin. You'll have a lot of edema. You'll have muscle loss. And like I said before, your immune system's gonna suffer. You're not gonna be able to fight off infection. You'll have problems with repair of DNA. 
which leads to cancer and all sorts of other issues. Other than that, you might be okay. Oh, except for some hair loss, you will lose your hair. Now, let's also talk about a lack of fat, okay? So if you're doing all these carbohydrates without high quality fat, and I'm talking about saturated fat, cholesterol, fats that include the omega-3 fatty acids, like DHA, which your brain desperately needs. And by the way, your brain is about 60% fat, okay? So if we start to cut down the fats in the diet, and let's say we do carbs and protein, but we go lean protein, we don't add enough fat, Boy, you're gonna have other problems because we need these fats for our hormones. We need fat to make bile salts to help you digest fats. We need fats to extract our fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, K1, K2. So some of the fatty acid deficiency symptoms would be dry hair, okay, and dry skin. Your ligaments will be very, very weak. Your collagen in your joints will be insufficient. So you have a lot of arthritis. You'll even notice that your vascular system, okay, which is made out of protein, will suffer. So you'll have spider veins, have red eyes. You'll be susceptible to getting an aneurysm and even a stroke because we need the strength of that vascular system. And we need fats to build up hormones that keep our mood up. For example, if you don't have enough fats, uh, you'll probably be depressed and your immune system will greatly suffer. And then the other thing about consuming a pure carbohydrate diet is you're going to just jack up insulin all day long. And that is gonna to lead to insulin resistance really quick. And now we have a problem with absorbing fuel, absorbing nutrients, all the nutrients that you need to get healthy. And we get metabolic syndrome symptoms. And you get diabetes type three, which is dementia. Now I wanna circle back into this B1 deficiency because one way to create a vitamin deficiency especially a B1 deficiency, is to consume a lot of sugar and refined carbohydrates. It doesn't necessarily have to be refined rice because you need vitamin B1 to metabolize sugar and carbohydrates. So what's gonna happen? They're gonna start getting subclinical B1 deficiency symptoms. And by the way, just because we're on the topic of B1, B1 is very protective against a lot of the damage from a high carbohydrate diet. One great remedy that I always recommend for people if they're a diabetic and they have high sugar is benfotamine, which is a type of B1 that can protect the person against all this collateral damage that's occurring because they have high sugar. Now, of course, it's not going to fix the blood sugars, but it will minimize the symptoms of being a diabetic. Now, since we're on the topic of carbohydrate, okay, if you are on a carbohydrate diet, which is basically a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet, and you have lesser amounts of protein, it's possible to do that healthily, but you really need to know what you're doing. Our bodies were developed from consuming fatty meat. Our genetics are totally based on hunting animals. And of course, there was times where we ate plants as well because we pretty much ate anything that was available. But our bodies were designed to metabolize animal products. And you can look at it from another way as well, okay? When you start cutting away animal products, right, and you're doing more carbohydrates or plant-based, it's much more difficult to get the key nutrients like B12. B12 is mainly made from animal products. You also have zinc, High quality zinc comes from red meat and animal products. Then you have omega-3 fatty acids, right? It comes from fish oil. And I'm not saying that you necessarily have to eat those now. I'm just saying that if you are sick, if you have weaknesses within your genetics, okay? If you have problems within your digestive system, it's gonna be very, very difficult to get healthy going on a plant-based diet. In fact, if you take someone with GI problems, People with genetics that don't allow them to digest gluten, for example. Oh my goodness, they go plant-based, they're gonna tear up their stomach. I mean, even polymorphism uh, for vitamin A, because now you can't convert beta carotene, which is in all the plants, to the active form of vitamin A, which is retinol, which is in egg yolks, it's in liver and other animal products. And then you might think, well, I'll just go ahead and take a supplement. Well, if you take a synthetic supplement, you're not gonna have the same effects. But it's possible to do, and I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying it's much easier with animal products. The more gut problems you have, the more carnivore you need to be as well, okay? Now, and I'm not just talking about eating lean steak. 
I'm talking about the healthy version of the carnivore diet, the organ meats, seafood, fish, eggs, a good amount of fat with that protein. And there's also a huge wide range of nutritional factors in animal products as you go from grain fed to grass fed to grass fed, grass finished. But overall, the point is that if you're gonna try a carbohydrate diet, you're going to not do well health-wise. You cannot survive on a pure carbohydrate diet for too long. Now, for the correct information on what diet to be on to promote health, I put that video up right here. Check it out.